Welcome to another edition of the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. period. I'm Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf, and we are here at the Women's Power Brunch, and we're together. We are together here during Super Bowl weekend in Viva Las Vegas, but we are here on the purple carpet for the fifth annual Sports Power Brunch, Latanya's story, doing amazing things, and we are celebrating the most powerful women in boxing. Well, in boxing, we are the most powerful women in boxing. Yes, we are. The most powerful women in sports, and a lot of amazing women are going to be honored and speaking today, and we are just excited to be here, to be amongst some, so many, so many amazing women that um, we've already connected with in, some, in a lot of our interviews. So, Giandra, I can't wait for um, our fans and our peoples to watch our interviews, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. I'm very excited to hear today's speaker for you all to see the interviews that we did today and just absorb as much knowledge, of, as much know-how. And uh, there's been a very important message of paying it forward. So just figuring out how we can do all that in the future. And we thank everybody who supported us this far. Absolutely. You know, this is it. We are leveling up Best Women's Boxing Show, period. This is our season three, I believe. Season three. Season three. And we are on the Blue Wire Network, guys. Ah! Can you believe it? All right, so um, enjoy our interviews, and we'll see you guys at the fights. I'm Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. Oh, see you guys at the fights. Bye, guys. All right, Sandra Douglas Morgan, this is an honor for us uh, to be here with you. My co-host, Giandra LaBeouf, and I, we have a podcast, Best Women's Boxing Show, period. Pretty much the only females in boxing that talk about combat sports on the Blue Wire Network. But you're here, and you're being honored today, and this is a pleasure. It's National Women's Sports Day. How does that feel to be honored on such an important day? You know, it's, um, it's incredible to do this on National Women's Sports Day, the fifth annual Power Sports Brunch, Sports Power Brunch, and on Super Bowl week, right? And so I think anything that can give greater visibility to women in sports is great. So to do have all these three things happening on the same day is incredible. I hope the women here uh, will continue to support each other, uplift each other, speak positively about each other to give the next generation of women opportunities. Thank you to you and everything you do. You know, for a, for a time as I was on the Athletic Commission, which governs and armed combat, so make sure that there are women actually in that regulatory role, whether it be ringing inspectors and and judges and referees that's incredibly important so thank you for giving visibility to more women thank yeah. you thank yeah. you for being a trailblazer for women because when I when I read so much about you it's your whole passion is to make sure that you're not it's not it doesn't end with you it's gonna continue absolutely being the first is not a success yeah. in my book it's making sure that you're not the last and that's why events like this are so incredibly important yeah. It's you know it's really hard because a lot of uh, sports you're a very male dominated um, industry so is ours ours is a very niche. What's some advice? Because I know there's a lot of young women that are a little afraid to take that leap of faith because they they don't think they're enough or it's a, you know they they you don't know quote unquote shit about boxing or shit about football. I apologize. But what's some advice that you have taken for yourself that you can offer? You have to be confident in yourself. You have to do the work, be prepared so that no one can question your experience. And you have to surround yourself with positive people that are going to continue to encourage you. But it starts with yourself. You can only control what we can control. And that really starts with not necessarily having how other people perceive you, how you perceive yourself and knowing and being confident in the work that you did to prepare yourself to whatever journey you want to embark on. And, and that is, it takes a time and I think, but it really starts with you because who else is going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? Absolutely. You know, we are resilient mothers, uh, women, and just trailblazers like you. Thank you so much and congratulations. Right. Thank you so much for stopping. Congratulations to you. Marvelous season, marvelous empire you are building with the Las Vegas Aces. I mean, it's truly, truly incredible. In addition to all the technical knowledge that you have, it takes a great deal of creativity to even envision what you've been able to accomplish. So what does that visionary process look like for you to take something in your brain and, and build it out to execution? Well, it started with Mark Davis realizing and understanding the importance of representation. He realized that he wanted women of color and placed myself and Sandra Douglas Morgan in that role to lead as women. And the fact that we were able to create our team, if you will, to build out our staff, we wanted to be inclusive, we wanted to make sure there was diversity, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, experienced, also being youthful in our hiring process, and we put, put together a great team. But to be able to be in a part of a city like Las Vegas, who has 100% embraced us, from their uh, attendance to our games, to when we're out at community events, um, this is a really, really special place. And I think that the world 
is taking notice of what sports and the impact that sports is having, not only from an economic standpoint, but how we influence and impact the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, so when you have the level of success that you're experiencing and will continue to achieve, does it blur the line of success from it? You know, there's always a distinction, women's basketball, men's basketball. Is it, do you find it most beneficial for it to be blurred to basketball? Or do you still enjoy that distinction? Or do you have thoughts on, on that as, the, as your achievements increase? I look at it as basketball because I grew up playing the boys and it didn't take nothing for me to wear them out to. So I think you have to look at these athletes for who they are and we are one of the best organizations in sports right now with two uh, world championships and when you're building a dynasty whether it's for men's sports or women's sports it's the athletes and we have some amazing athletes that just happen to be women as among the best organization, we are the best women's boxing show. So what advice could you give us for our build, building our brand? We are unicorns in the combat sports space. We're part of the Blue Wire Network. So we're always looking for the next level and how to break the glass ceiling. So what advice would you offer to us for our brand building? I think it's just going to take time. So there's got to be a level of patience, but also there's got to be a passion behind it. Um, when there's the no that you're going to receive or the challenges that you may face, use them as opportunities. Make sure that once that one door shut, that you either keep knocking or you go find another door to knock down. And then when you get that one yes, then you just do what you do best and be your most authentic self continue to strive for excellence because it exists in all of us. And then when you do get to that position of bringing others along, make sure that we do that. Make sure that we pay it forward. Okay, May Anna Hassel, uh, did you know today is National Women's Sports Day? Yes. Yes. Women and Girls in Sports Day, yes, February 7th. I, I think it's fitting that one of the most powerful sports brunches with some of the most powerful women are gracing this purple carpet on a very historical day. I would say it's a historical day. How is that, uh, being a woman in sports? Um, it's, it's very significant because that's all we need. We need coverage. We need people to pay attention to what we're doing. Um, so this event really amplifies all of the hard work that's going on and hopefully will inspire other people to get involved and keep going and not give up. What is it about women, are, are they just afraid to take that leap because it's always normally a male-dominated sports and all of, of all the sports. What are, what's some advice that women and children, little girls out there can take from you to know that there is a net, I promise, there's a net. Um, well, I, I'm afraid a lot. Um, you know, there's times I'll go to meetings and I'll be like, oh my goodness, even coming here today, I was a little nervous. Um, but if you believe in yourself, if you know how hard you work to get to where you are. So no one can take that away from you. You just have to keep going. Pardon me, but what outlet are you, or which uh, business, because I'm oh. flipping through it and I wish someone had the name and I was like, I don't know. Um, my name is Mianna Hassel. I'm the vice president of Next Level Sports and Entertainment. Yeah, she said to me and I'm like, I'm not sure, but yes. <laughs> But no, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, Giandra, my co-host, and I, we have a women's boxing show, a podcast on the Blue Wire Network. Okay. The only females on the network that speak about boxing and all combat sports. Okay. So that's why for us, it's, it's huge in a space that we're little, but we're still massive that speak volumes. Right. But thank you, you so much. To the corporate level that you've achieved, there's a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of focus. So what were some things that got you through as you pushed through to reach the next level of success that kept you most motivated and focused to what the next ceiling was to shack. Yes, yeah, so first I had to learn that it's important to realize that you're supposed to be there. If you get that job interview and they send the offer, you're supposed to be in the room. So walk in with confidence and know that you have something unique to bring to the table. But on the flip side, know that occasionally you might need to flex your style a bit. Maybe there's a certain meeting or a certain individual that you're working with that requires a little bit different for you to get something over the finish line. It's important for you to recognize that, have that self-awareness, and be able to um, be agile and to make changes where you need to to be able to get things done. And ultimately, that's what's worked. You know, Being myself is what I'm going to be all the time, but how I go about bringing it to life is where I flex. Mm -hmm. These types of gatherings are so important for not just women, but the intersectionality with sports and the impact that we have in, in society and to revenue and marketing and all of those things. What will today's event fill you with that you'll carry into as you return back to your post at Coca-Cola? Yes, I look 
forward to hearing from all the honorees. I know that they have achieved a lot and have gone through a lot in order to be in their shoes. So I look forward to getting the nuggets from them, but then also from the other women in the room. Like there's something special about each one of our unique walks. Um, there's something you can share to motivate or inspire. So I just look forward to being in this positive place with all these other women and us sort of walking away with something new, a new relationship, new information that can help propel us forward. And lastly, we are very much uh, looking to absorb. My partner and I are going to be attending to the event because we are building our brand. So when you are at the corporate level and you're looking for upcoming brands to connect with, to build with, what are some uh, key markers that are important for like women-led brands that you want that Coca-Cola wants to be involved with? Yeah, so Coca-Cola does support you know diversity in brands and, and also just different people that we work with. Um, so certainly, you know, being aligned with our core values is really really key. But ultimately, you know, this business is about relationships and and meeting and learning and understanding what you're great at and seeing how it fits with something that we, we may be trying to do. So I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, yeah, because we want to be friends too. Okay, I'm Janae Alejandro. I'm here representing the Hennessy brand. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Love Hennessy. Oh, oh good. Over. We love boxing. Uh, we know. Oh, we know. <laughs> you know what? I have a Hennessy bag at home from uh, the partnership that you all did with Canelo yes, Alvarez. Yes, yes. So Hennessy is um, uh, a very tra it's very trailblazing in what it becomes involved with, very diverse and lots of storytelling. What does Hennessy look for when they decide what athletes, what corporations that they want to get involved with? Yeah, so of course it's always a blend and a mix. There's a few things that we do look for. Versatility, hugely important in the brand, not just people who are over-indexing and having masses, massive success in their chosen field, but what they're able to achieve on and off the court or uh, the field, if you will, to really become trailblazers and luminaries in their chosen path. And then how do they bring the community with them? Hugely important on the brand. We also thrive and really core to our DNA is the idea of consistency, right? Because we're a product that's well over 250 years old. We're still handmade. We're still grown via grapes and barreled in France. So really this idea of a consistent product year upon year that's passed on through generations and building of community, of wealth, savoir-faire is really critical to us. And today we get to see this beautiful intersection of women, yes. of yes. sports, uh, yes. just a crosshairs of yes. all types of successful people in this space what do these type of events fill you with that you'll carry in back into the office with you I think you know number one my heart is so full of joy and gratitude to be here and to see this and to witness this. I have to tell you, as I was thinking through my talk today, I realized that women were not allowed to get a credit card in their name until 1974, only 50 years ago. I mean, civil rights had been signed and passed through Congress before women in America could get a credit card. Just something to think about in terms of how we've been able to develop and really run the world, smash glass ceilings, and continue to thrive and bring our communities with us. So I I hope that this brunch, which is in its fifth year, is the first of many that continues this momentum, you know, that will go through our daughters and granddaughters. Congratulations on the success of Las Vegas Aces. This is it's just tremendous to see the line get blurred and it's not like, oh, that's women's sports and it'd be secondary. But just looking at how Las Vegas has embraced the team and the success that it's had. If you could point to one single thing, what do you think has been the most important element of in addition to the team, but just the organization as a whole to elevate it into a truly global brand? Um, I think um, Mark Davis putting so many women in position to lead. Honestly, I think that's something that uh, a lot of people haven't felt like will be like the, the recipe to success mm -hmm. in women's basketball in general and the WNBA as well. So seeing that women can be in positions of power and be coaching and a team can be successful, I think it's an, an important example that's set. And he's, they put a lot of resources into our team, and it feels like a professional team and organization. You have the resources that you need to be great on and off the court, and I think you just really can't underscore what that means for a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Equitable Resources. We love that. We love equity. Look what happens when you do it. Yeah, look up the equity versus equality. Look it up. Okay, go for it. We got to bring all the sunshine to the rain. Well, thank you so much for stopping for us. It's so important to have these spaces where it's an intersectionality of women, of sports, of women of color. What do uh, events like this fill you with that you can carry forward into your professional and your personal life? Uh, I mean, it fills me with so much inspiration. Um, you know, as athletes, we 
are so focused and dedicated on our craft that sometimes it gets lost that like there's so much more happening around us and there's so many women in the spaces behind the scenes that we necessarily don't get to see every day that are help pulling those strings and making things happen. So to be able to be in a space like this and celebrate those women, celebrate those women of color who look like us, um, it's really exciting. And again, just to be here, like we usually, as WNBA players, we're usually overseas. So to be able to be here, be visible, sit down and listen, um, it's just so inspirational. Thank you so much for stopping. You're welcome. Thank you.